Well, now it's time to quickly begin the first set of panel discussion on smart metering rollout plans for deploying 250 million smart meters across India. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Sambitosh okay. Mohapatra, Leader ESG Energy Utilities and Resources, PwC, as the moderator for this session. We have a first panelist, Mr. Madan Mohan Chakravarti, CEO and Managing Director, Iskar Imeko. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sanjeev Sinha, mm -hmm. President, IT and mm -hmm. Digitization, Hello. India Power Corporation Limited, yes, IPCL. Sir. Mr. Ajay Sharma, so Energy full Expert. Full Mr. Bashir Ahmad Dhar, Jammu Power Distribution okay. Corporation. And the last panelist, Mr. A.H. Kamble, okay. Director, okay. Technical Hubli okay. Electricity okay. Supply okay. Company Limited. A uh, very warm welcome to all the panelists and the moderator. And uh, now I would request uh, the moderator to please uh, take it fro forward from here. Thanks, thanks, Ayara, for this opportunity. Um, hopefully, I'm audible. Yes, yes. Okay. So I take this opportunity to also welcome all my esteemed panelists, and some of them are also my clients. So I'll be uh, extra careful and extra cautious on how I take the moderation forward. Uh, so good morning, Basir Saab. Good morning, Ajay. I think we have worked together. Uh, and hi, Sanjeev. Hi, Madan. Uh, glad to connect with all you guys. So the, the way we will structure this panel discussion is I'll uh, start with some initial comments on how I see this smart meter rollout happening in India. Subsequent to which um, each of the panelists will have a first round of uh, questions that I'll pose to them. Uh, subsequent to that, we will have a second round that we will uh, construct within the 45 minutes. We can open it up for audience questions after that, and then we will end it with a closing session. We will try to keep it to time, so which means that we are at 10.14, and uh, we should be able to close it by 11.10. That's our uh, scheduled time. Uh, so just to start, quite excited with this panel. Uh, I see government and private utilities both being here. Um, I see a meter manufacturer who believes in intelligence on quality uh, being here. I also see Ajay, who was known as the architect of the smart metering program in the country being here. So it will be quite an exciting journey that we will go through. Um, MC, can we mute some of the people who are not speaking, please? Yes, yes, we can do that. Yeah. I don't know, Singh, if you can mute him. Uh, we'll do it, just a minute. Uh, it's done, you can uh, start. Sure. Yeah, so just to kickstart the discussion, we are at a cusp of a major disruption in our industry in India. Um, four big elements, right? be it on decarbonization, decentralization, disaggregation, and digitalization. Let me explain. Uh, decarbonization is all about our zero carbon goals, renewable prices dropping, uh, share of the renewable prices going up, ability to match that to our demand profile, important. A uh, lot of planned and unplanned retirement in our coal-based projects. Investment hugely happening on technology, uh, battery cost economics becoming viable. So that's one element of the disruption. Second is about decentralization. Uh, and this, I mean, asset miniarization and IOTs and smart metering uh, coming to fore. Um, so technology en will enable virtual power plants, matching of the demand to the supply and optimizing costs. Third that I talked about is disaggregation. Disaggregation is Technology will enable decomposition of load patterns, which will become significantly important. Uh, then digitalization, which is something which is known. And at the cusp of all these four are IoT and smart meters. Right? So which means to enable all of these disruptions, the critical thing that India has to focus on is, is the smart meter. Now, a little perspective. When I started my career in 1997, uh, in 1998 onwards, there was this chief minister's conference which used to happen in India. Every conference, if you look at the minutes of the meeting, talked about 100% metering by next year. Uh, first, they talked about uh, distribution, um, boundary metering, 
Then they talked about 33-11 kV metering, then DT metering, consumer metering. Unfortunate, but in 2022, maybe 25 years in my career, I have not seen the metering problem being solved. And that's a big issue which we face as a nation. Given that today we are a 6,50,000 crore electricity utility uh, in terms of size, 80,000 crores is the leakage which happens, right? And we are serving close to about 25 crore customers. Now, this economics, if I translate into this smart metering economics, means that about 1,50,000 crores if I spend today on 25 crore customers, it means that on an annual average, there is a cost burden of 25,000 crores, right? If I break down the investment into a seven to eight year payback period, which means that an average consumer of India would have a thousand rupees incidence of cost because of the smart meter. Now that I see as one of the debates which happens that a thousand rupees per customer per year is incident for the next six to seven years if you are going to invest in smart meter. But look at the other side, 80,000 crores of losses happening. In two years, it's 1,60,000 crores you can save immediately. Right? So that's the economics that I am talking. Now the second layer that I'm talking, uh, when I'm, I have been part of these smart metering programs in India for the last two, three years. So there are eight success mantras that I see in a smart metering uh, program when it is getting implemented. First is that there is maybe a huge pushback which comes on that whether smart metering should be done and whether there should be some industry and market changes which will enable a smart metering program to be successful. That's one. Second is about project management. Now the same smart metering program, if it can be done in three to four years has immense benefit, but the same program, if it is done over an eight to 10 year period, you lose the kind of benefits. The third is high quality communication infrastructure where there's a lot of positivity, 4G network, 5G network investment will happen, which will only support uh, the whole smart metering program. The fourth is access to sustainable finance and if the scale up happens, the cost benefit. Now this is significant given the focus which is happening around the world on ESG and the kind of funds which are coming, maybe our ability to tap into that would be significant if you're wanting to uh, leverage the smart metering program. The fifth is, can the data which comes out of this meter be monetized? And that would drive some amount of cost reduction or benefit realization in the smart metering program. I think that would give a lot of confidence to utilities. Sixth is that can this help in distribution utility operation streamlining, which means the 80,000 crore that I talked about, can this come to bring it down? The seventh is because of smart meters, can we drive convergence, which can happen on home automation, mobility, telecom, which can open up a whole ecosystem of startups in this industry, which has been lacking for the last couple of decades. And the last one is that, can I provide certain services to customers which can be priced in except apart from the tariff? These are, I believe, the eight success mantras which will enable the smart metering ecosystem to develop in India to be done in the next three to four years. Now, having said that, let me pose the first question to Ajay. And Ajay, I'm deliberately picking you on because you have been one of the early adopters, starters, working from the trenches, let me say, in Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana. So what are your reflections on what can enable this implementation going forward? Uh, uh, and I'm saying on these eight mantras, if you can just speak about, and do you believe that the ambitious goal that the government has of doing it in three to four years is something which is feasible? Because the same program, eight to 10 years, if it takes, I would believe the benefit is lost. Exactly like how we lost an opportunity when our EPDRP was getting implemented. So, Ajay, over to you. Yeah, so uh, morning uh, uh, all. And uh, you rightly presented all the points, uh, Samir, uh, Samitosh. And uh, see, uh, I wouldn't be touching all the uh, financial benefits arriving out of this program. This is already well deliberated and uh, it is now proven that there is a uh, 
uh, amount of financial benefit and this program can fund um, itself out of uh, uh, the revenue, additional revenue uh, generated because of the reduction of losses and value added services, I would say, Correct. including the improvement in the operational efficiency. Uh, since I have, you know, um, idea or experience, you can say, uh, of implementing around 2 million meters, uh, which is a very uh, little quantity with respect to 250 million, uh, which is proposed to be installed. Uh, so based on that, uh, uh, I feel some of the things which are very important, uh, considering the project management particularly. So how we are going to implement, how we are going to implement this program, how we are going to structure uh, the solution particularly, because uh, on meter part, uh, the things can be controlled with a good quality plan and uh, you can define the things in the meter, which is a commodity item and can be controlled um, uh, through interventions uh, by quality experts at the manufacturer level and uh, at the warehousing level. But uh, what my point was, the solution which is very important, uh, already uh, the services for uh, uh, AMI has already been defined in the CA guideline and other guidelines which have been issued time to time. But my point is beyond that, how we are structuring those services. Uh, there are three key data set which are you know, uh, coming from the smart meter and that is your daily uh, profile, your billing profile and your load profile. Uh, billing profile and daily profile would be used mainly uh, for the billing purpose and uh, uh, smart prepayment uh, uh, solutions uh, which are going to be implemented uh, along with these schemes. But if you see the, the load profile, uh, which is very important and key to your advanced analytics. So how all these data uh, flow happens from meter to MDM uh, and are we required to take all these data to MDM and make it bulky? How we are going to manage the, the database for the different uh, 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 I would say functionalities like uh, how we can uh, structure the database management with to the, the data set it is uh, processing. So all these things um, are very important to be optimized, to be, uh, I would say, um, with a technological intervention to be evolved. And beyond that, there would be one more thing which is very all these applications uh, like has MDMS applications, all these are being deployed on the cloud. Then your uh, implementer will come and then they will do all kind of integration services and do the same kind of activity repeatedly for the different discount. So can we have a system in place which you know can provide enterprise level uh, structure where all these apps can be, I would say, uh, managed as a golden copy in master configuration environment. And then multiple instances can be run. And those instances can be uh, managed through, you know, cloud native tools, which are already available. How we can structure or gel application with the cloud services along with the advanced security system, which is very important uh, for, uh, I would say, successful and reliable and fast rollout for 250 million meters. Because there are a lot of things which we do repeatedly. And if this structure is in place, all these things can be taken care. Although it will take some time to uh, roll out this kind of structure as well. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, there uh, should be some uh, um, innovation at the communication uh, module level, uh, because uh, right now this particular thing is very key component uh, in the entire value chain of smart meter and the capex control. Other things are more or less settled. So this particular item, how we can optimize where where. Um, we can provide, you know, multiple options, maybe two or three or whatever is suited uh, as per the requirement. So this particular innovation, I have done some um, study and it is really possible to 
innovate on uh, this particular component and uh, uh, it can uh, definitely add the value into the entire system. The next item would be the, the governance of this program, which is very important, right? Uh, the uh, synchronization between implementing agency, the, the AMISP, which nowadays are in picture, and the utilities, or maybe the government uh, stakeholders. So this particular synchronization through governance mechanism is very important. And whatever um, innovations are happening, whatever uh, technical optimization are happening, how it can be uh, plugged into this entire system is really very important. And how um, uh, best uh, the modular or plug and play solutions can be deployed as per the requirement of the states is really very important. The last and not very least, the fund flow management. It's the key for success of this program. And uh, although you have already touched some, uh, Samitosh on this uh, particular aspect that there are funds available. Yes, there are funds available, but are these bankers and financial institutions getting the confidence uh, or uh, can we instill the trust in them that, okay, you will, um, you know, uh, pay it back in time. So on this particular aspect, the intervention from the government and the utility, I would say uh, is very important that the initial CAPEX requirement uh, based on the milestones can be paid uh, as per the timeline that will provide huge confidence in the banking section and uh, financial institution to fund this kind of program. Although this, these programs uh, have a very uh, good ROE and other things are there in place, which we, we know, we everybody knows in this system. But if the banks get confidence, the things would be uh, really, you know, smoother for uh, implementing agencies to roll out it in a fast manner. And uh, other intervention, definitely the technical optimization at the cloud level, at the storage level, all these things can be deliberated and uh, uh, maybe structured uh, for a better delivery of this program, for a faster delivery of this program. And with all these things are in place, we can definitely manage, you know, the o and also at a very low cost. So uh, I think uh, this is all from my side, Samitosh. Um, I would be happy to answer a question on that. And thanks, Ajay. I think you have laid out what are the individual elements which are becoming relevant. Uh, so let me just take it to Madan here. Yeah. Um, I think Madan, you come from, from a company which has already installed about 100 million meters worldwide. So, and uh, I quite like the focus that you have on sustainability and bringing intelligence to energy. It means that you look at it from a perspective of how it can drive energy conservation, energy transition, uh, all of those aspects. Now, where I am uh, wanting your response here is that what has been the response worldwide around these smart programs? One. Second, what Ajay also laid out is the complexity uh, having to be dealt by a utility when they want to implement a smart metering solution, right? which means the whole ecosystem. If I'm saying there is a project implementation agency, there is a telecom service provider, there's a cloud service provider, there's a system integrator, there's a smart meter OEM, there's a head-end system, there's a meter data management, there's a data analytics and consumer apps. Now, if you look at this whole ecosystem, I have already counted nine or 10 of them, right? And you look at an Indian utility, government-owned, um, struggling with English. recruitment, getting uh, whatever is the recruitment, the capacity, the aging workforce that they have, technology solution implementation, it's not been so successful mm -hmm. in an Indian context. Now, if that's the whole realm, if you are coming in and you are only one part of that yeah. LG, how do you engage with a utility to give them confidence to that? The overall system value chain and all the 10 components of the value system which makes this smart metering program successful will come together. And I'm, I'm even here not even talking about the financing aspect, which I believe this comes will take. But sometimes even the equipment manufacturer bring along with them a sustainable finance layer. Right? They say that 
I will also provide you that financing. So, how do you integrate this is becoming important, Madan. And is there any any perspective that you can share? That you have globally addressed that in the Indian country. Yeah. Okay. I think I just wanted. Uh, there are some sounds coming from Ira. I know. I can uh, mute uh, that. Uh, all right. I'll I'll just do it. I'll do it. Okay, so uh, I just wanted a confirmation if I'm very clearly audible. Yes, you are. Okay, so uh, you know I would not like to go very technical. You asked that what is the response of uh, smart grid deployment of smart meter deployment or AMI deployment throughout the world. There is no one single answer. The reason is if we want to go for a, one single answer, that means there is a problem in the AMI deployment. The business case. The use case, the requirement of smart meter deployment for each and every utility, even in the same utility, different topologies are different. That is the crux of the AMI deployment. The moment any organization or any AMI SP or a metering company or a solution provider or a system integrator thinks that my solution for country A for utility B will be exactly for country C and utility D, then you basically you are planning for failure. So that is a the first thing, and uh, I will build my answer based on this particular thing. Yeah, of course, we have implemented more than 100 million meters uh, in various countries, which ranges from Sahara to Alps, where the temperature ranges from minus 50 to plus 50, okay? Uh, and so our uh, experience in all these things are very, very varied. And in the next two to three minutes, I'll try to kind of converge this and what should the right use cases for India. Coming to India, even if you see on one particular utility, uh, his requirement or their requirement will be very different. Uh, like if I talk about Chadni Chok in Delhi, and if I talk about even Greater Koilash in Delhi, GK2, uh, the communication system should be different. Okay, uh, It can be and why it should be different? Because in that case, you increase the reliability and you reduce the cost. It, it goes together. Regarding sustainability, uh, what the Indian utilities are seeing, you know, I, I remember a movie that I saw many, many 10 years back called Jab, uh, it was Band Baja Bharat, where there was a guy from the groom side, there's a girl from the bride side, and they meet and they fell in love and they find that, okay, it's very difficult to organize a wedding. Because you've got caterers, you've got tourists, and that is exactly uh, the agony of the problem that all the utilities throughout the world has. What they see that if I take the uh, engine from Audi, I take the gearbox from Mercedes, I take the body shell or steering system from Skoda, and how do I do? Now, the automotive industry in India has matured because if you see the, uh, I, I give this example quite often Tata Safari and Tata Harrier, they use the motor from Ford and they use a gearbox from Hyundai. They're fierce competitor because they have matured. In the field of IoT, contribution of the competitors in one single system is must to make it sustainable, reliable, and cost-effective. That means we should come out of proprietary system, number one. Number two, we should be absolutely happy and energized and cheerful to engage with by competition and compete also in certain, certain areas otherwise. That is the second point uh, which is India is lacking. Now coming back to our organization, how we are going to tackle this, we saw this you know, throughout the world. So we decided that at least the basic things, you need a proper meter and all three kinds of meter, that is water, gas and electricity. That should be coupled with all kinds of communication systems, that is RF, you know, cellular or PLC, okay? Seamlessly, that means the meter is on the run. You can take any particular communications module out and you can put any other communications module in. We call it hot strappable, not in the same kind of technology, but in different kinds of technologies. And the same can submerge into a proper hidden system. It should be an universal hidden system, maybe SIM compliant, ideally, because in that case, uh, all other integrators, you know, you, the basic funder is a company cannot take the utility as a hostage. So they should provide a solution where the utility gets the confidence that yes, I'm not a hostage. And that is the basic thing that India needs to immediately do to make this successful in a 250 million or even more. And then if we do these two things, it will be a successful story. 
So you so, need what I talk about, you know, SIM compliant hidden system, integrable, any kind of manage, metadata management with any kind of billing system. And we decided we should have everything in our portfolio. At the same time, we should be absolutely open to integrate of any of these verticals of any of the competition. So that is our uh, business strategy. Uh, yeah. Uh, do I have Thanks. one thirty more seconds? Then I can. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Uh, yeah, okay. the, the other thing is, you know, uh, when you are talking about rega regarding sustainability, uh, India was having asking for five and a half years of meters. So when you started coming in here around one and a half years back, I started promoting. No, we should have. India is not a dump here, right? Okay, it's our country, it's our motherland. So meters should run for 10, 15 years. It has got lead, it has got cadmium, whatever we say, it has got many good things, which is not good for us, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so a meter should run, number one. Now, if you see, uh, we change our watch battery. Uh, we, we are ready to change the battery of a watch, which you buy with five lakhs rupees or 500 rupees every two years. We change the battery of a pacemaker every 10 years, but we want a battery in a meter, which will run for the throughout uh, and enter life of the meter. These mm -hmm. small, small things increases the cost of the meter unnecessarily because meter uh, battery can always be changed in, in the world. Correct. Correct. The Correct. second thing is we need a box outside a meter in most of the utilities. Certain, mm -hmm. certain progressive utilities are coming out with that system like CSC and others. Correct. Now that means what? You need that in you know older days, mechanical meters or even static meters, you need that. Now it's a huge plastic wastage, one. You need extra area. So your design for installation is hampered. We call it. So the lineman, when he's going, he's not an ease to put the meter. And the third thing, very important, any enclosure basically reduces your communication compatibility. Okay. Whether plastics or they're, they're, whatever plastics you take, there will be some kind of graphene or graphite or some lead, some metal okay, in that enclosure. And that reduces the ability to communicate. And overall, so... I think, first of all, there is no need, number one. And the thing is, it is extremely disturbing from the Indian sustainability, technology, reliability, and of course, cost. Over to you. Excellent point, Madan. Uh, I think you clearly laid out uh, how one should go about implementing these kind of uh, solutions in the Indian market. So, Basir Saab, I'll come to you. Uh, uh, so, just to put it in perspective, as one of the newest discoms which got formed, Jammu Discom. What are your plans around this? How are you taking it forward, this whole smart metering, uh, which is getting discussed in your discom? What are your plans and how are you going about implementing this? Am I audible, sir? Yes, perfect. Proceed, sir. Uh, thank you for providing me this chance uh, to be a member of this uh, panel. Yeah, about uh, our rollout plan, uh, we have around uh, 20 lakh consumers here and uh, 10 lakh consumers are metered and remaining 10 lakh consumers are still unmetered in J&K. Sure. Actually, we have two discounts here, Jammu, Jammu uh, Distribution uh, uh, Limited and Kashmir uh, Power Distribution Limited, two, two discounts we have. And uh, we had a uh, sanction of two lakh meters under uh, Prime Minister's Development Program. Out of those two lakh meters, we have awarded 1.15 lakh meters, and uh, those meters are under installation. Uh, so far, we have installed uh, 40,000 meters, and uh, another six lakh meters. Uh, those are at a tendering stage, and these six lakh meters uh, we are installing. The first one, 1.15 lakh, is uh, capex model, and this six lakh meters is totex model. So we have 180 crores available uh, under uh, PMDP, Prime Minister's Development Package. That, that amount we are going to give as down payment to the implementing agency. And re remaining amount, uh, we will be recovering from the consumers on uh, per month, per meter basis. Sure. So this, this uh, project will run for about uh, 10 years. One year is the implementation period and remaining nine years is the operation and maintenance period. So this is under the uh, guidelines of uh, Ministry of Power. Ministry of Power prefers this model, OPEX or TOTEX model. What they say that the agency which installs the meter should not run away. Hmm. They should also operate and maintain operate, operate and maintain this meter uh, for uh, say uh, seven years, eight years, ten years, so that somebody takes care of the meter. We sure. have uh, we have very bad experience with the meters installed under our APDRP program. 
many DT meters which are not functional now because nobody is taking care of those meters. Hmm. Now, uh, from utility utility point of view, we are facing certain problems at this point of time. So, as far as the hardware and software of the meter is concerned, it is it is well defined. You uh, go by uh, IS one six triple four, or uh, uh, for communication one five nine five nine. We are facing problem at install installation front. Mm. For example, small this this may, these problems may look very small, but mm. but we are we, we are caught in these issues. Mm. First of all, when we started uh, installing meters, so far we have installed forty thousand meters, and our, we are relatively new to this field. Correct, correct. So some meters some meters burned got burned. Mm. When we analyze the reason being the damage at the terminal of the meter hmm. poor hmm. connection between service line and the terminal of the meter hmm. now the the issue is here issue is here when you install a meter and the service line is already there what we found our meter has got a terminal of 25 m square and hmm. the service line is used by consumers they are using all type of service lines 16 10 uh, 4 even some hmm. people have as low as 0.5 Hmm. When you connect this wire to the terminal, it doesn't make proper connection. Connection, hmm. and, and and the result is that the meter burns. Hmm. Then we try to we try to find in IS. We have we have old IS one three seven seven nine, but that talks about making a loop and other things. That that is not relevant to this meter. It has got a cylindrical terminal. Hmm. I talked to some other utilities also. Some in in the rarest of rare cases, they are using lug. And uh, one expert in Delhi told me that we just we just connect one one foot of 25 mm square cable to the meter and then we make a joint and that is just a jugad and nothing okay. else. Mm -hmm. So if we if we go by specifications, I think Mr. 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 Ajay uh, will also mm -hmm. second me. You don't have a proper specification, don't have to have a proper guideline how to, how to make this connection. Now in my opinion, the best thing will be to use a bimetallic connector. On meter side, you have brass, and on other side, you have aluminium or copper. You should have a bimetallic connector. But now that now the contract is awarded, so when you when you uh, see the cost of this connector, it becomes in it, it is in crores. It is in crores. So mm. so so you are caught between uh, devil and deep sea. So another mm. another mm. issue these these issues have not been addressed so far in the specifications. See how mm. many options are there. Another mm. another thing is you install you install a meter. So mm. when you go to install a meter, there can be either DN can be a bare conductor or there can be a aerial bunted cable. Mm. So what about what about the connectors? Which type of connector you have to use with conductor with ABC? Mm. Again, mm. if you miss if you miss distribution box, for example, you install four meters on one pole. So you have to make you have to make eight connections to the line for these four meters. Mm. If you miss distribution box, see how important this will be. Then that means if you if you uh, float a tender, you have to take care of this thing also. Distribution mm. box should also be there. Then then in case of distribution box, also you have two options. Are you going with MCB or without MCB? This is the, this is again this is again to be settled before award of the tender. Mm. Again, why why do you install the meter? Should we install meter on the uh, pole on utility pole or within consumer premises? Or outside consumer premises on the wall of consumer or on the house of the consumer. I will put mm. one example here. Punjab, what Punjab did? They brought out meters from the consumer premises outside, and they installed meters on poles and on distribution boxes, on meter boxes, uh, multiple multiple number of uh, meters were put in boxes, and their losses came down drastically. Mm. Even before launch of RAPDRP, just bringing out the meters. Mm. So here mm. we have a good opportunity. We can install meters on poles, but this is to be decided before before issuing the tender, so that mm. contract effective in all these cases. If you miss any of the, any of these things, the number of meters being very large, it is it, mm. is, it is very difficult to accommodate these items. So we are facing these installation issues at this point Perfect. of time, and we have just started them. And let me tell you, there is no guideline available as far as I know. Maybe other panelists know. I didn't find any guideline which could address these issues. So this is this is very important for us. Otherwise, otherwise we have good experience 
you know, we are receiving tampers, we are receiving uh, tamper alerts in our data center. So mm. we get we get like, you know, one, one consumer tried to uh, tried to tamper the meter. He tried to remove the cover, and we got cover open message in our okay. data center. Everybody was happy that <laughs> we have achieved our goal. And then, if you have magnetic tamper, if you have earth load, if you have single wire operation, everything we are getting in the in the data center. Yes, Mr. Okay. I guess, sir, communication communication is a challenge. Sometimes we we lose communication. That mm. is another issue. Communication mm. communication. Uh, we are here through RF. And sometimes, mm. sometimes we have to change the communication card, NIC card. We call that NIC card, network interface card. So mm. these these issues should be addressed because we are doing for a large. Data. So my request to panelists and others who are working on specifications, please address these issues, and that will be good for utilities. Perfect. So, so before I reach out to Mr. Kamle, I wanted to bring in uh, Sanjeev here. Sanjeev, quite uh, quite the real problems which Bashir Sahab really brought out, right? And this has been a typical thing uh, when you talk to a government utility versus a private utility. Um, even in RAP, DRP, we heard that when a government utility, for example, gives out a contract, um, and many of the contract needs flexibility, uh, change requests to be accommodated, they become constrained because in a government procurement process, you have a particular way of doing it. I remember Delhi Discom when it got privatized, gave out a tender, for 10 crores for an ERP implementation. By the time the ERP implementation got over, they had already spent 200 crores to make it real, to make it, to make it, um, what do I say, useful for themselves. And it was all through the proper process, right, with regulator approval. Now the same contract, if it was given by a government utility to a ERP implementer, would have got stuck. The contract would have got cancelled. You have got another contractor to do it. So I'm saying, how do you deal with it? as a private utility um, and having experience in this. And even IPCL is one of the, you have high value consumers, right? So even that experience of smart metering and whether this actually realizes the benefit that we all envisage is one. And second, the contracting model. On If you can reflect on both of these. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Ayra, for uh, inviting me. So, uh, Samitos, that question which you posed is very relevant in today's scenario. So, um, you know, uh, just like the consumers, the DISCOM also have a lot of expectation from, uh, from smart meter implementation. Okay, so every problem which you mentioned, yes, has to be dealt appropriately so that these expectations can be met. Now, most DISCOMs have put up a plan to convert their grid into smart grid here. Some are at PUC stage, while many others in Madhya Pradesh, for example, have gone ahead with full implementation. I mentioned Madhya Pradesh since IPCL implemented in 100% consumer in one of the towns in Madhya Pradesh for MP Pashim Shetra Vitaran Company, making more the first town in India with 100% smart meters. Okay, so these, ex these initiatives does come with a lot of expectations which will address. And... Uh, and while we implemented it, and we are currently implementing three and 3.5 lakh smart meters for that region covering five towns. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so every problem which you mentioned, yes, we have dealt with it. I think, uh, I think there's a very close coordination which is required to be, you know, uh, to be done with, and we are a smart meter implementation. So for example, uh, you know, you mentioned during Mr. Chakravarti's discussion that there are so many components in the uh, in the implementation, and these components have to be managed appropriately so that the final implementation can happen successfully. You know, and these every component has a role to play. So there is a very close coordination with with the implementing partner and the discom, uh, which needs to be taken care of, and keeping in view that the expectations from the implementation is kept very much in, in mind because at every point, these benefits will be measured. They will have to see if uh, they're actually reaping the benefits from, from them and how they are you know, solving those problems. So there were some expectations with which these initiatives were taken up and, and how these expectations are being met. So some of them, for example, you know, most discounts have a high ATNC loss. Of course, currently it is around 21%. We have a problem to deal with. We are a discom ourselves, so we have uh, we deal with that. 
um, they want to deal with let's say tampering theft now this data from smart meters they provide that kind of visibility and control to address these problems so uh, it is now actually very easy to disconnect lines of defaulters and get even logs of tampering i mean it's, it's now very easy once the smart meters are in place mm. another area where they look for in the benefit is the uh, billing efficiency for that matter so once uh, you know the billing efficiency improvement is what they are looking for and uh, uh, this is actually clearly visible in the areas that the smart meters have been implemented so again this has to be measured on a regular basis so you know one another imp uh, impediment if that is not being met we have to again address that because that is the expectation with which the entire implementation was actually happening mm. iscom also wants to know the real time data on the outages so that they can activate the various mechanisms in uh, outage management etc to you know down to reduce the downtime um even uh, let's say the operational efficiency like uh, you know optimizing load on and distribution transformer rerouting of the various uh, traffic if one dt is overloaded all this visibility is required uh, a great amount of such vis visibility does come with scada but uh, much more visibility is is required uh, to manage these uh, these benefits Uh, and these are very important components of the entire one so when we say smart meters we don't need consumers alone we mean along the grid part also and that's very sure. important okay so so that element also has to be met so while we are implementing the large number of uh, smart meters in uh, madhya pradesh a, a, a good number is actually at dt level as well it's not at consumer level it is at dt level so that tries to solve many of these issues so and many of the discount wants to at least uh, transfer most of the low end customers to a prepaid customers you know so which is not possible in the current analog meters so therefore this transition to a smart meter has been a solution to it so you know it helps them that the uh, recharge is done and it is instantly uh, you know uh, recharged and that helps them very much the the dt uh, you know the health of the dts is also of critical importance here so the three phase smart meter for example are used are allowing the discom to monitor the health of dt and then take the corrective steps to reduce the chances of outages okay in fact not just the smart meters i would say there are other kinds of iot devices are also being used at dt level for health monitoring mm -hmm. in fact to take a step further you mentioned about the data analytics piece to take the step further if this kind of a data is collected and used properly the predictive data analytics techniques can be used to predict failure of dts in advance mm. so that they can be shut down for maintenance purpose and reduce chances of failure these steps you know can mm. can reduce outages significantly now mm. we have most of these comes have not reached that kind of maturity Okay. Yeah. This is a bit away because this requires large volume of clean data. Okay. Mm. And, uh, once they have, so in the next few years, uh, the areas where smart meters have been implemented, the data is accumulating. So in the next few years, they would have enough data to look into these models to reap mm. those benefits. So as we go along, the smart meters use of smart meters will mature. Mm. and so will be the benefits to the discom and the consumers alike so well said well said yeah. these benefits have to be measured at every level and that's mm. the crux of it so if if the measurement if the if the benefits are seen by all i think they will all join together and the coordination becomes easier mm. no no well said uh, sanjeev because what what you're saying is that today the benefits would first accrue to the discoms a uh, consumer to see the benefit realized will take some time as the maturity happens because if you start designing tariffs of on time of day if you start for example passing on the monetization piece that you have got from that data back to the consumers then the consumer also will get some relief uh, on the existing tariffs that they are paying on on uh, on the uh, on electricity the other thing i just wanted to close out is with you is when the contracting model you said that you are with a government utility doing this contracting for 3.5 and many of these government contracts are for example 
not envisage the scope of work. So if there is a change, is that getting addressed? Because I just wanted that flavor before I go to DISCOM. Yes, so that's what I mentioned. There's a close coordination required with the DISCOM and the implementers. In this case, what has happened is the DISCOM is the main uh, contracting party. Okay? And another DISCOM is the contractor party. Why another DISCOM? Because the DISCOM, the other DISCOM, which is the IPCL in this case, uh, they have the various components behind them. And since they are a DISCOM themselves and they have implemented such solution in their own DISCOM, they know these components very well, how to stitch together, how to project manage these cases. In fact, they pointed out wherever there are some gaps so that the discussion can happen in advance because of the experience that we have had. So that's where sure. this comes in and these changes can happen and they have happened. Okay, particularly on the infrastructure part, it has all it has already happened because uh, uh, we have had a, a large volume of disconnections on a certain load. So infra had to be optimized further and uh, at a significant cost, and uh, we had to actually do that, and we have done it, and the problem has been solved. Okay, yes, but uh, but we have to address it. Okay, to the best of our knowledge, also we try to say that in advance. So that the implementing party, or rather the, uh, the the contracting party, they are able to uh, take the benefit from the uh, the contractor's experience. Sure. So thanks, thanks, Sanjeev, for this. So let me now go to Mr. Rusha Bendrapa, who has joined in from his call. Uh, Mr. Bendrapa, is there any uh, nuggets or what has been your experience in terms of implementing the smart meters? I think he's Mr. Rusha Bendrappa, are you able to hear us? I can see you on mute. Uh, the MC, can you please check? I think uh, there is a, a small technical issue from his side. So if you just continue with the other panelists. Sure. So yeah. we, we just have another five minutes before we can open it up for audience. So one last comment from each of the panelists. Uh, let me start from Ajay. Ajay, if you were to be asked by when will the 250 million smart meters be implemented in India, what would be your year by which we will reach? So, uh, Samitosh, very difficult question you actually asked <laughs> to me, but uh, uh, let me answer this. Uh, and uh, I would be very pragmatic in answering this question. So, uh, when I see uh, this kind of uh, large scale deployment, I see two, three years time uh, would be stabilization and standardization of the processes and the technology and the deployment. Sure. So uh, I think uh, in these two, three years, uh, we should be able to reach maybe around 25 million. Hmm. On so you're saying by 25? By yeah. 25, we should be reaching about 25 uh, million. In, in two, three years, like maybe by 25. So you can calculate like that. <laughs> the 25 million should be the optimal number I can envisage. Beyond that, uh, it can be definitely uh, out maybe uh, 40 to 50 million a year. Kind of uh, um, that pace we can achieve. So sure. this is how uh, I see it. Uh, right. Thanks, thanks Ajay for, for your comment. Madan, I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, and if this is the kind of scale up that we are seeing in India, do you believe the ecosystem of all the components that I spoke about would be able to address this in terms of uh, their implementation ability? Yeah, components, I don't think will be a problem. Uh, but smart meter is not about components now. You know, the components mm -hmm. probably will get eased within next, it's already has started. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
it is about the systems the solutions the cloud which we uh, still not focusing from that point of view because there will be a lot of data mining see when somebody what you started in the in the very beginning the smart meter is going to be the digital litter box of your house okay correct Correct. Understand, like there will be no P15 Chandigarh Road, Calcutta 40 for my address. You know, my address will be 11.22. You know, like that. And there, you know, I write my letter to my daughter. I just take to the meter, and it's get delivered to my daughter in, in San Francisco. Things will happen like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The to so government needs to focus on this uh, solution portion, where mm -hmm. how we can have really. Uh, standard protocol, open protocol, communication systems, and uh, software. That is number one. And number two, coming back to this, if the political will and the technical will is there, we took mm. three years to have EVM, right? Electronic voting machine. Mm. Uh, you started at the same time, and they are still trying to do that, right? Got it. Okay. So uh, if we can do EVM in two and a half years, smart meters mm. can be done in next, you know, eight, nine years. It's not a problem, 250 million. But that willingness technical, we have electricity same, we have got switches same, but if you see the meter for all utilities, even in one state for different utilities, the configuration changes, the things changes. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we, ha we have a very different systems per utility which measures the same thing, which is regulated. So we have to understand, we have to understand these things. And if the willingness is there, I think it is uh, definitely possible and it will open up many other things. Absolutely. You need meters yeah. for EV. You know, you cannot. Mm. If, if if government is you know serious about EV plan, you have mm. to have smart meters mm. and directly connected to the uh, water and gas. Also, this is water with the future. You know, so we we must also see the whole thing. That correct the value chain. Yeah. So yeah. and and Madan, I I am I am also an optimist to believe that in India we have a ten percent deficit from cost to serve to the revenue realization. And I truly believe that the um, implementation of smart meters will give rise to other income streams for an utility, which will help them to manage the tariffs well. So globally, we have seen six to eight percent of other revenue streams supporting the consumers, right? So therefore, if the ten percent is this eighty thousand crore that I'm talking about, when you, because of smart meter, we realize about fifty sixty thousand of additional revenue. It really eases the burden on the customers, and you don't need to increase the tariffs of customers. So that's a big, big advantage that we will get. Should we be pacing up our implementation? Uh, but with that, Basir Sahab, any last comment from you on this? How optimist are you? When will Jammu and Kashmir see full implementation? Yeah, we are. We, are, we have a plan to complete 100% smart metering in three to four years. But there is, but there is another challenge. Smart meter alone is not sufficient. We also need to replace bare conductor with the uh, aerial mounted cable. That is a, that is a bigger challenge because uh, smart meter alone cannot prevent theft of electricity. If smart meter is there and the consumer has easy access to bare conductor and he hooks the bare conductor and he commits theft, then the very purpose of the smart meter is lost. So that is that is a challenge. That is providing uh, air uh, aerial bunched cable with smart meter as well. That is a challenge for us. Sure. And another th another thing is our climatic condition. You know, we have sometimes we have temperature as low as, low as minus ten degrees centigrade. So we are mm. we are uh, watching and waiting to see the performance of disconnector, the performance of communication cord, the yeah. performance of battery under these low temperature conditions, which is unique to our UT. Sure. So Sanjeev, coming to you for the last word, I always believe utilities when they said that I know the customer, I used to always say that you only know the meter. But now with a smart meter, you will actually know your customer, right? Because what's the consumption, what's the pattern, when is he there, when is he not there? So any last comment, Sanjeev, on what will it take to realize this whole dream of 250 million? I think very important component in this entire thing is to understand the customers. Okay, the consumers have changed over the years. They are not the same what you, they used to be 10 or 20 years back. These consumers are the same consumers who are using e-commerce, e-banking, insurance. They are all using all these ways in digital ways. And they expect similar digital benefits from their utility company as well. So that's where utility company have to come up 
and service these new customers in a more uh, you know more uh, transparent and digital way so some of the expectation for example are they need uh, let's say real time information of their power consumption you know they need digital interaction you know because they have been seeing this on uh, e-commerce and uh, e-banking everything is visible to them on their mobile phones they want to see the same thing here on with regard to their power consumption what about the voltage fluctuations is it actually showing up can they actually take out the report in a in you know at a click of a button these are some of the expectations that that they have the outages they don't expect um to log a complaint for the outages now if you look at the broadband any of us may be using at home the broadband we don't complain the the broadband service provider tells us that there is an outage and they are working yeah. mm-hmm. okay so that's that's where it is we don't complain we in fact haven't even noticed yet and the sms comes this is the expectation from the utility okay. that if there is an outage they should immediately know it even before them and they start acting on it so that they know when it will get restored so these are the new consumer this is the new who are the mobile app holders they expect the expectations have completely changed and i think smart meters and its data giving out capability they are the right devices uh, which have been implemented right now but there is a very important component here smart meter is not uh, implementation just implementation of smart meter is not enough as i just mentioned it is the usage of this data which forms this key success or failure of the implementation of it so while data will continue to come how we use it is up to us how we give the benefits to our understanding the consumers and pass it on to them that is where i think we need to really work on map, make sure the benefits really get passed on to them sure uh, um, and with that i think we will close the panel discussion and we have couple of minutes uh, for uh, audience questions if they come in um, yes, otherwise uh, we can take the audience uh, questions yes, we later. have we have few questions uh, which have poured in so the first question goes to mr sanjeev sinha can you please clarify the funding models that are currently being explored for smart meter rollout between government of india state government discoms and implementing partners this is for uh, mr sanjeev sinha yes so so typically not the here also there has been a lot of changes which has happened government has a lot of schemes which it has floated to float to help uh, the discoms to fund their uh, uh the smart meter implementation initially all it started was on the capex model here okay and that's where these schemes were actually helping them but today i see lot of opex model also operating in the market to to help uh, the industry here and today not only the capex model but the opex today now actually i see a a mix of the capex and the opex model in place and the various government uh, schemes like uday uh, they are all helping uh the discoms to fund uh these new initiatives and and i mentioned about the atnc loss there you know if you are able to reduce the AT, AT, atnc loss to a good extent uh that additional revenue uh, will help in funding this uh, this uh, new initiative that we have been talking about so all the together is actually helping the uh, we have a huge target but i think uh, we are well poised to Uh, to take this initiative in the right direction the only other thing i would say is we still have to explore the power of sustainable finance right so i was quite intrigued when i read that uh, uh, today we are still sourcing from the traditional financing sources right if we believe that uh, a smart meter will help in energy conservation energy transition offsetting i think that's a very very powerful tool that india should explore uh, Yeah, please, MC. Uh, yes, please, MC. Any other questions? Mr. Indranath have just joined the session, and uh, he have one question to the panelist from our Assam desk. Hello, hello. May I order you here? Yes. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are ordered. Uh, good morning, all the esteemed panelists uh, in this discussion. So, I am Indranath Khan from Assam Power Distribution Company. Uh, i had one question uh, so basically uh, we are implementing smart metering uh, in the uh, in lt consumers only right now and uh, 
what is the scope for going on to the high valued consumers means what is the progress can you if if you can brief us on that across other utilities yes can i take that question since you have not mentioned uh, yeah yeah sure. please please go ahead sir yeah so uh, you know hd customers are basically uh, they are also uh, there has been a lot of implementation at the hd consumers also okay because uh, but the expectation by the hd customers are slightly different from the lp ones hd customers are also looking for optimization of uh, power consumption because for many of the manufacturing units which are in the hd category power is a raw material and uh, they are trying to optimize it so therefore some of the techniques in which these hd customers look for and the expectation is again from distribution company is that they will help them in optimizing power industry in uh, power consumption for these customers and uh, depending on the tariff during the day you know they may actually try to optimize them they need uh, that kind of information available about the power consumption as a function of time this kind of information is required for them uh, so which is again possible through smart meters and possibly multiple smart meters at various sections in their manufacturing facilities okay and usage of these these data sources uh, can be assimilated and using data analytics there are a lot of optimization techniques which are available so these are some of the expectation from hd customers and uh, and why from the discom because you know although we haven't seen much that in the country in the western country such optimization techniques are available by the distribution company to the hd consumers so therefore their expectation from us is very similar uh, there's a lot of work to be done in this optimization area but i think that's where the common interest lies well said so can i can i can i add something here no sure. proceed sir please please uh actually he is asking about this uh, i think uh, ctpt ctpt operated meters which uh, hd consumers use yes sir because you cannot connect, you cannot connect meter directly to the hd so that is not possible so in the in ex existing meter there is already a ct there is a current transformer there is a potential transformer and meter is there so all you need to do is to replace this meter conventional meter with smart meter then there is there is the uh, issue of uh, communication technology if you have if you have large number of consumers for example some industrial areas then you, it is better to go for rf technology you can use one collector and uh, one sim and you can collect information from all these consumers if the consumer is somewhere isolated in isolated area you can go for gprs technology and use sim for individual meters and uh, you can go for smart metering but as of now as far as jnk is concerned we have not installed any uh, htp htctpt operated meter till date but the technology is already there and you can go for it uh i have another question uh this is for mr sanjeev sinha again why the focus on prepaid smart metering okay so uh, we have all seen mobile how they were actually you know so mobile started as a postpaid connections for all i am sure all of us know that right there that led to a lot of other problems like collections um uh, and you know on uh, all the postpaid connections uh, now those were some of the problems which got solved when actually the uh, the model of prepaid was adopted in mobile connection today 80% of them are on prepaid and collections is not a problem anymore a similar model is expected to be followed here in the power industry where the collections is a problem we have an atnc loss where there's a large uh, component is the commercial loss right atnc loss is 21% right now at an average in the country and uh, most of the commercial component loss is from the lt consumers and even the low end consumers and uh, the defaulting parties even the line to be disconnected takes a lot of time as per the law Okay, so the so there is a commercial loss continues, and there is a need to change this. So there is a concerted decision by everyone, including the ministry, that yes, there is a need to move all of them and the, uh, to prepaid ones, just like 
the mobile industry did, there was no such mechanism available earlier. Now with smart meters coming in, the mechanism is now available. So therefore the usage of these mechanism to move to a model where it becomes a win-win for all, I think that's where we are moving in the prepaid basis. Just to give an example, my company has 80% of customers on prepaid basis, ELT ones. And collections are not a problem. Yeah, and I would like to add one more thing. You know, I completely agree with that. And it has got nothing to do with meter. The same meter at any point of time can be converted to prepaid to postpaid by the software. So, uh, you know, there is no change in the meter as long as in India you don't need keypad and things like that in modern uh, smart. Uh, in fact, there is nothing called smart. Like the phone that you have, your phone can be prepaid and a postpaid. You don't change the handset. Similarly, you don't have to change the meter. Just to clarify, you know, because many people may think you need to change the meter or the communication systems. No, for uh, you don't need to change that, right? All right. Uh, I have another question, and this is for Mr. Ajay. What are the challenges and uh, mitigation for large-scale deployment? Yeah. So, uh, on part of technology, definitely there are a lot of uh, optimization has to be done. Uh, particularly on database management and storage management and uh, how we are structuring the data flow for different uh, uh, functions. So that particular part need to be uh, addressed, evolved, and then to be implemented uh, in a manner that uh, um, all these applications and the cloud serve the best purpose of uh, this deployment. On part of uh, ground implementation, there would be a lot of challenges, definitely. Uh, one particular and big challenge, uh, that would be the consumer uh, acceptance of this program. So uh, this is a major challenge I would uh, see in large scale deployment, particularly semi-urban and rural areas. So uh, uh, this need to be tackled uh, with a sustained consumer engagement and uh, um, uh, telling all these benefits and uh, all these uh, services, better services, which would be available to the consumers um, in, uh, in, in, I would say, in interactive manner to these consumers. So uh, these are the two major things. Uh, there are many things uh, which we can deliberate, but I see these are the two things which need to be looked into uh, for this kind of a rollout. Sure. MC, any other questions? I, I think that's all we have uh, so far. And uh, if there are any questions mm -hmm. coming, we will be forwarding it on email or something. Sure. So thanks all for uh, a wholehearted participation. I learned a lot uh, from what I heard from my panelists. Uh, hope you have all learned something and will take something out of this panel discussion. With that, let me conclude the session. Uh, and thank you all panelists for your time and for sharing interesting insights uh, on the implementation. So the only thing I'll take forward is we will see then 250 million smart meters getting deployed by 2030. Uh, so. Thanks all. Thank you so much for all the panelists and the moderator for uh, taking us through the rollout session. And uh, have a good time. <laughs>